Let's talk about dynamic subdivisions. This is a feature which is re fairly recently added to ZBrush, and it's one of these features which is amazing when it comes to production, particularly when dealing with hard surface assets. So you might have a model like this, and you want it to be really nice and smooth. You can see here that we have really hard edges everywhere, and we want this just to be very smooth. This is similar to subdivision surfaces in other software. So what you can do, we can go down here to the subdiv one, and then we can hit Control D a few times, and now it's nice and smooth, and this is looking exactly the way you expect it to. And we have this guy here, where we can, you can use dynamic subdivisions on. And this we can find under subtool, or tool, geometry, and uh, dynamic subdivs. So we click this one, now you can see that it's also nice and smooth. The hotkey here is D, and Shift D to go back. So D, now it's going to ask you, hey, you currently have zero subdivs. Would you like to activate the dynamic subdiv? And we're going to be like, yeah, we always want to do this. So the two models now are going to look very similar. If we go to subtools again, and then we go to we go up and down, you can barely see any difference between these two. You're using the, uh, I'm using the up and down arrow on the keyboard for this. So there's barely any difference whatsoever. So why would you want to use dynamic subdivisions instead of regular subdivisions? Well, let's look at a slightly nasty feature of ZBrush. If we now go down in subdivision level on the one we already subdivided, the one which has all the subdivision levels now, we go down here, and then we start to compare the lowest level of them. So we'll go back to this one and unsubdivide it. So Shift D, and now we have, we're back to regular row polygons, and we're back to regular row polygons to the other one. Let's use the down arrow to look at between these two now. You see how much the subdivided one has been has shrunk like it's like it, the entire thing is relaxed so now if you take this model here the dynamic subdivision one export this out of zbrush again into blender maya whatever it is it's going to look exactly the same but take this model and bring this one back into zbrush or into maya and you can't really use it because now it's so soft like this here is from a production point of view, this is now unusable because it's not the same model. Yeah, sure, in some specific cases you might be able to use it, but in the majority of cases, you want the model to look identical to what it looked like when you took it in and out of ZBrush. So this here would be a real nightmare to actually work with. So in our case here, when you're dealing with a hard surface asset like this, you really, really have to use dynamic subdivisions. Now, why would you bring in a hard surface model into ZBrush just to smooth it? Well, this can be a case where we have a head in here. So we have a we have a nice little human head in here, and we want to see what the design looks like with a model made in Maya. In this case, then we um, just put her in, and we just activate dynamic subdivisions. And now the model is going to look as similar as possible to the final result. Let's look at some settings as well for dynamic subdivisions. Let me go into geometry. And then we go into dynamic subdivisions. We have we have some settings here. If we look at the Q grid one, let's see what happens now. This actually increases like the base subdivisions for it. So I tend to always set this to the lowest level because otherwise it becomes really nasty and gridded like this. So it subdivides it subdivides the local base first and then it smooths everything. So everything is still gonna be nice and soft, but it it just looks awful in this case here but in a lot of cases this is exactly what you want so this just depends on your use case and in most cases we want to stick to set the q grid to zero so dynamic subdivisions really nice and easy to work with you hit the d key to enable it you hit shift d to disable it you can just click this nice little button here and the reason we don't want to use the right one for hard surface objects is because it shrinks which screws up our entire life when it comes to 3d modeling 